Okay, uh, thanks to all of those who contributed to, to this uh, discussion. Uh, Minister, I'm not going to get into the war of statistics that often these debates sort of descend into, although I'm not saying they're not important. But it, you have to start from acknowledging the truth, okay? So when the government says the number on housing lists have fallen, that's a misrepresentation of the reality. According to the Parliamentary Budget Office, there are actually 122,000 households if you take waiting lists where people are in HAPS, RAS and leasing uh, arrangements, right? Not secure uh, tenancies. And the reduction in the numbers on the housing list are overwhelmingly because you failed to raise the income thresholds. People are taken off the list, not because they still don't have a housing need, not because they still don't need social housing support, not that they are still not in a position where they can't pay the rents that are out there or to afford the housing prices, uh, but because their income goes slightly over the threshold, they're off the list. Makes the stats look better, makes their situation exactly the same. In fact, it makes it worse. As I pointed out to you, the woman who with her teenage son in one bedroom in emergency accommodation for four years and she's not even entitled to HAP support, never mind a council house, because she's over the threshold. So there's been a deliberate policy of not raising those thresholds, and I read it in your report. Uh, in fact, young, uh, young Byron Warren, a transition student, read your, uh, the review that you got last November, uh, who's in my office this week, and pointed out that the, in, in Dublin, uh, people are paying 60% of their income uh, in rent. Huge numbers of those people are not entitled to any financial support whatsoever. Not HAP, not social housing, and they have been, many of them have been cut off the list because you, raise the, you refuse to raise the income threshold. So at a time when more households than ever need housing, social housing, social housing support, the proportion of people entitled to that housing support has been slashed from 48% to now about 30%. That's the reality uh, of the situation. Now, the, the long-term solution is for us to build on-scale public and affordable housing. 20,000 public and affordable houses a year at least. Okay, but setting that aside, there's stuff you could do now. Uh, and I think you don't do it, and this is Deputy Kenny's and others' point is, and we need to just get this into our head. The housing misery facing hundreds of thousands of families on housing waiting lists, unable to afford the rents and so on, or now desperate people flee fleeing from Ukraine, that misery is benefiting a certain group of people. In fact, the worse the crisis gets, the more valuable the property is of those who own rental property. The more valuable the property that those are sitting on lands that are, have planning permission, 80,000 planning permissions, and the value of them is clocking up, the worse the housing crisis gets. That's the elephant in the room when it comes to the housing crisis. Unless we break our reliance on people who are profiting from the housing crisis, the vulture funds, the investors, the speculators and the property developers, we are not going to solve this crisis. Uh, and indeed, there are worrying indications that private builders are starting to slow down in terms of their delivery because they don't see it as profitable for them. So we propose some immediate solutions in this, setting aside the bigger ideological uh, debates. Use it or lose it. If you have a vacant property of which there are 48,000 that have been vacant since the last census, 160,000 in total. You've got six months to use it or lose it, if there's not a good reason. Of course, in some cases, there are good reasons. But we have a proactive policy of saying, if a property is vacant for six months or more, it will be taken over by the state and used to provide social and affordable housing if there's not a good reason for it. And we have teams of people uh, in every local authority who are going out and pursuing those properties uh, and ensuring they are brought into use. Uh, that we have state construction capacity, that we rebuild it. It can't be built overnight, you are correct. 
but you can stop with the situation where it is being actively run down. Right? And we create, a, we start to take a state and local authorities, take on apprentices again, start to rebuild our direct construction capacity so we are not dependent on contractors and developers who in many cases, as in the case of the co-op housing in Lachlanstown you may be aware of, 45 properties now frozen because the contractor pulled out. We need our own construction capacity to deal uh, with that situation. Any, any situation, Minister, whether they are Haps, Ras or Leasing, or whether, as in Tahani House in Dublin 8, where some of the people are over the threshold, therefore they're not getting Ras, Haps or Leasing, where a landlord is selling just to benefit from the high prices that they can command at the moment, the state steps in and buys the property. And it's not happening, Minister. All sorts of excuses are being put up. St. Helens Court still hasn't got over the line. Still hasn't got over the line. Right? 17 empty properties sitting there for three years when people are uh, in homeless accommodation, children and so on. Uh, and finally, the income thresholds. Admit the truth about those who need housing support and raise the thresholds to ensure that they are entitled to that support.